I was recently searching for paper textures online and I knew exactly what I wanted and I was having trouble finding it. And then I realized that I could just make it in Blender. I don't know why I didn't think of this sooner, but anyway, I created a paper template and I can change it whenever I need to mix up some textures. Here's how I did it. So new project open. I'm gonna start by selecting the cube, X, delete. Now I'm selecting the camera. I'll press N to open the toolbox. And I wanna go ahead and zero out all the settings here so that the camera ends up dead center of the scene, facing down. Uh, now I can select the Z axis and raise up the camera a little bit. I'll do the same thing for the light. I'll leave the Z on that one. Leave it where it is. Also pointed down. Now I go up here to add mesh, plane. That's gonna be my paper. Press S and drag to scale it up a little bit. And now I can select this little camera to go into camera view. And with the camera selected, I can raise it up just a bit more. <clears throat> Fill the paper scene in the scene. Now I wanna go over here to output properties and I want to set this, let's say 2400. I want a square, so I'm gonna do 2400 pixels square. I don't need to mess with any of the other settings because they're for animation. And I wanna set an output, which I've already done this, so um, let's set it over here. <clears throat> it's a good habit to get into, even though you don't necessarily need to do that for exporting still images. Uh, so my scene set up, my camera set up. Now I can switch over to the shading viewport. Camera view, and uh, I'm gonna click this last circle here. That allows you to see the rendered shading. And with my paper selected, I can create a new material. We'll call this material paper texture. Now, right off the bat here, shift A, shift A, shift A, I'd like to add a noise texture. And this just basically generates noise. Shift A, again, to create a color ramp. And I'm gonna run my noise texture into that color ramp. But before I do, I'd just like to check out what the noise looks like. So this is what we're gonna be altering to get our texture for the paper. I wanna switch this noise texture to 4D, which gives you an extra parameter to mess around with. So I'm gonna grab the factor, connect that to the factor of the color ramp, and then the color goes into the base color for the paper texture. And now for these, this is gonna end up being the little like flakes and stuff that are in the paper. So setting the white will set the, the base color of the paper. And then for that, you know, I want kind of a little bit of a yellowish tint to it. And I can reference my image here. It's almost like a peachish yellowish color. So that's pretty good. And now for the darks, I'm gonna go for more of a brown. Very cool. Okay. And now I can mess with these settings until I end up somewhere that I like. So for scale, I want it to be pretty large scale. So the texture will be very small when I do that. I'm gonna max out the detail at 16. And roughness, I'll go up a little bit. Um, you have to get up real close to see what the roughness does, but. Just kinda sharpens the edges there of all the noise. And now that that's done, 
I'm going to squash everything by dragging over these sliders until I have just just enough of these specs and flex going on here. I definitely want more than there was in the other paper. Oh. But just kind of to give an idea of what I'm trying to go for. I think this brown might actually be a little too dark, so lighten it up a smidge. Looks pretty good. Maybe I'll make the scale a bit smaller so they're bigger. Yeah. And now you can see here, really messing with any of these settings is going to shift things around a little bit. So you have an unlimited supply um, of texture. Making things bigger or smaller will kind of make it look a little more zoomed in. And, and that's definitely what I'm going for here is a more zoomed in look. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this texture, which I'm pretty happy with. Looks good to me. Uh, actually, before I do anything, I should save it. I'll take this and Shift D to duplicate it. Shift A to add a vector bump. And what this is going to do is it's going to take the texture here and now it's going to apply it to the roughness of the paper. Uh, it's going to make the paper look three-dimensional and allow the light to affect it by connecting it to the normal. So we take the factor, put it into the height, and then the normal connected to the normal. And at first, it's always a little more extreme than you want to go, which is okay. I'm going to take this strength down to maybe 5 and, oh, 0 0.5 is what I wanted. My bad. Distance maybe try 0.8 and uh, I'm gonna just mess with the noise here to make it a little more subdued so I'll make the noise a lot smaller by doubling the size here come up on the roughness a little bit maybe yeah that's it <laughs> it looks like paper and now I'm gonna go ahead and mess with my light settings I'm going to increase this to about 2,000. And depending on how high my light is, I can get a little bit of a vignette effect, which is pretty cool. I don't know, right there for right now, looks good to me. And now I'll save everything. I'm going to go over here to the render properties and for render engine I want to switch over to cycles it just has a little bit of a better um, output it's a little slower but it's it works really well and now go up to render render image Okay, and now that everything's finished rendering, I want to make sure to go up to Image, Save As. Give it a really cool name like Paper. Save. There's a lot of ways that you could go on to use these sort of paper textures, but the important thing is that um, it's very customizable. Uh, you can change colors, textures, etc. Uh, you can mess with distortion and, and get things like rice paper look. Um, even translucency if you wanted to get into that. But this for a base makes a really good overlay texture uh, for animation or for drawing. Hopefully you found it useful. If you do anything with it, I'd love to see it. Send it my way. Uh, and of course, don't forget to like and subscribe down at the bottom. Thanks for watching.